So you finally got that big buck, field dressed it, got it home and processed the meat out. Now we're going to help you figure out what to do with it. Thanks for joining us. Today we're working with some of the bigger roast section that we cut off the front end of that deer. Usually you get about three roasts off the front. We took this one and we're going to cut some steaks off of it. What you're going to need is a good knife to work with the meat, a fillet knife to get all the fat off, about two tablespoons of garlic, two tablespoons of your favorite oil, and a quarter cup of onions. That's about all you need for any venison recipe of fat, some garlic, and some onion. I'll put a link card in so that you can watch us actually carve this off the deer and see where it's coming from. But we took a bunch of pieces off so we could show you what we're actually going to do with the specific cuts and do them a little different and stuff. For this, we're just going to slice a normal steak. And so what you're going to want to do, try and keep your blade moving in one direction as you peel open that roast that we made. And then you're going to measure out about a one inch steak. The same thing, you know, try and keep your blade moving in the same direction. It helps the meat groups stay together. You always want to cut across the grain of the meat. And there we go. There's a little steak. And that's what we're going to work with. Once you've got this trimmed off, you're going to want to separate out these muscle groups. Uh, you can keep them together, but the muscle groups in the front half of the deer are a little tougher. Have a little bit more of this connected tissue that you're going to want to remove this. It's not going to pull off easy. Take it off the outside. Get rid of any of the silver skin. It gets really tough. And that's what we're going to cook up right now. It's just a piece off the shoulder doesn't have to be much but it's pretty thick when you're doing a thicker steak you want to sear it on the outsides over high heat and then reduce the heat uh, the rest of this is either gonna be you know I'll cook this little piece up for my wife it's about perfect size for her and then the rest of this I have a burger bag that I just maintain we'll show you making burger at some other point but for this piece for my wife I still have to clean it up a bunch with the fat you're better off getting a little bit more into the meat especially since I've been aging these you know, it dries out the fat, dries out that connective tissue and makes it extra tough. Oh, I need a better fillet knife. I've got a better fillet knife. I just need it in my kitchen instead of my tackle box. Work with the sharpest knives you can get, best knives you can afford. So I've got a little piece for my wife, a little piece for me. The rest of that will go in the burger bag. We're going to keep aging the rest of the roast piece that I pulled off. And the rest of this is going over to the pan. It's my home cast iron, not the one we take on the trail. It's a little bigger, a little more used. Just got the burner on high. Got my big cast iron pan going, uh, trying to get the surface really warm so we can get a good sear on each side of that steak. When you're cooking thicker pieces of meat, you have to pay attention to your heat a lot more. Uh, that's why we get a sear to try and seal some of those juices in. So that's why we're going to add the oil first. Don't really want it sparking, which means you're a little hot. I think you're just going to get a sear right on there, just drop it in. This one's going to take less time, so we're going to flip it with our meat hook. Yeah, see? The sear is the darker brown. You're just trying to get a nice little layer of dark brown without burning it. You only want to sear even the big one for about a minute. to get some of that color in there, a little crisp. This is that meat hook from Earl, Triple D's Forge. We use them at home on and on the trail. 
And then you want to make sure you get all the sides. So this has that big fat end side that we're going to make sure gets a good little blast on it. And then you're going to reduce the heat. If your oil's spitting, it's too hot. Uh, but I knew that the olive oil has a really low smoke point. Uh, so usually we'd use butter or lard, which has a higher smoke point than the olive oil. You really just want to make sure it's not sticking, which it really shouldn't with the cast iron. There's that sear on that other side, and a little bit on the end. Now we've reduced the heat so that they can just start to permeate up through the cast iron and start to cook the inside of the rest of this. We're going to put a lid on it so it's more like an oven. Now that we've got the heat turned down and a lid on it, we're going to go ahead and add our garlic and our onions. Because we're cooking thicker pieces of meat, the garlic and onions will burn if we start to cook them when we start searing the steaks. So you don't want to start cooking them until you're into the roasting process of the steaks. I flipped them again. Uh, my wife's is probably about done, so we're going to get it off there and let it rest. Going to keep the onions in there for a little bit with the thicker steak. It's still going well. I cut into my wife's steak after letting it rest a little bit. You can see it's just got a little bit of pink. You shouldn't be afraid of pink. It's the secret to tender cuts of venison from not so tender areas is, you know, low and slow heat, get a good sear on it. Don't be afraid for it to be a little pink, you know, it's not red. It's just a little pink. And your onions start looking all nice and translucent, but before any of the garlic starts to brown out, you just check your meat. Maybe give it a little slice or pull it apart a little. Then we're just gonna get it over to a plate to rest. And you're just gonna spoon that over. Let's see, after you give it about five minutes to rest. Oh yeah. So that's it, man. Pretty much the easiest way to cook a venison steak. You just cut it off, sear it, cook it low and slow. It's all about temperature and trim. We're gonna cover some easy recipes, some complicated recipes, but at the end of the day, we're just gonna show you a lot of ways to eat your deer. We hope you enjoyed this easy one. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. This has been MI Adventure Life. Thanks for watching, guys.